This is Life Questions, a program that looks deep and wide into the Word of God for answers to your many questions about life. I'm Bill Harris, your host, and I am joined by our local panel of ministers who have been studying and researching answers to viewer questions. I'd like you to meet them right now so we can get started with our discussion. We've got a lot of good things to talk about. First up, we have Pastor Mark Bird, State Director of Revive Ohio followed by Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church in St. Mary's. Next, we have Pastor Patrick H Kamler of Westminster Christian Church. And rounding up our panel, Pastor Michael Wyckoff of Joy Harvest Fellowship. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you back. And I should mention to our viewers that this is uh, your second week on the program. And interestingly enough, we had to cut off uh, right when we were entering a good conversation about conflict, how to resolve conflict in a godly manner. I'd like to pick up on that again. There is seemingly conflict in just about every quarter of society these days mm -hmm. about something. And we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world as Christians. How do we move about effectively to resolve conflict, gentlemen? And if you want to take that in any type of arena, one or another, that, that's fine. We've got another question here that relates to resolving conflict in the family. So that might be approached, but then there are other areas as well. Well, I, I think one of the, and, and I started talking about this on last week's show, was the idea of, and I said lay all your cards on the table, but there's an element of, are we actually talking about what we're talking about in the context of conflict? I listen to a, probably more than I should, but I listen to a lot of political discussions on things. And the one thing that I continually notice is people are talking past each other. Mm -hmm. They're not That's addressing the, the point, whatever the point is, it doesn't matter what the point is, but they're not addressing that point. They're, they're talking past it, or they're trying to do something else in order to score points with quote unquote their side. So they're not head on. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, yeah we're, not, we're not talking about what we're talking about. There was a, a debate that I watched between a, a group of four people, and the topic was um, political correctness. Is there a benefit to political mm. correctness and free speech? And at no time in the context of an hour and a half debate did they actually get to the topic of political correctness <laughs> in free speech. In fact, one of the, uh, one of the guys who was on this, on, I think was going to argue for, against political correctness and for free speech, sat there and go, you know, I was really looking forward to having a discussion about political correctness and free speech. This was 90 minutes into it. And the crowd laughed and people laughed, but... The truth was they never actually got wow. into the topic they were talking about. So we have conflict because we're not, we're not talking about what we're talking about, and we're not listening to each other when we're talking these things. We're doing a lot of talking past each other to, to score points, to own people on YouTube, whatever the case may be. And, and we've got to start talking to each other about, about issues, about what bothers us, about where the conflicts are. And until we do that... Yeah. We're not going to go anywhere with this with this question. Do you perceive that there's a measure of dishonesty or the, the the lack of willingness to want to come front and center with what those issues are? What, what do you think I, causes that? I, I don't I don't know if it's dishonesty per se. I don't think either side in any question is seeking to be dishonest. I, I think that the question that is trying to be resolved, both sides bring various other questions into it. You know, what we are talking about. Okay, let's say masking in schools, all mm -hmm. right? There are a variety of things that are brought into that rather than just is there viability in protecting children with masks in schools. Mm -hmm. There's political questions, there's social questions, there's uh, economic questions, all these things that are brought into it. So we, we can't address everything all at once when it comes to conflict. Like you have to find out, okay, what is the main argument? We need to stick to that and address it. Now, of course, there are different ways to address that sure. specifically. But first things first, we've got to get on the same page yeah, about what we're talking about. And I think what a lot of people run into is they go into a conversation where there's conflict, mm. go, going to be right rather than hearing anything else other than that. I'm not coming here to make my mind. My mind's already made up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come here and try to convince everybody. And that's what I learned a long time ago. Uh, whenever I'm counseling, particularly with a couple, whenever they come to talk with me, I ignore at least the first five minutes of everything they tell me because I know it has nothing to do with the problem. Wherever they start is not the problem because now they're just both wanting to be right and I, there's nothing helpful there. So we let that go by, get that, get, blow off that steam. Now we can get down to something where we can start finding some common ground. And, and I feel like there's a lot of uh, arguing that never gets past that first five minutes. 
we're both still trying to be right rather than hear anything anybody else is saying because my mind's already made up. And you can never resolve conflict with your mind made up before you go into it. It's tough. E even if you don't change your mind, uh -huh. you can't be going in thinking, not only am I right, but you're going to be right when I'm done because you're going to agree with me. That, you can't resolve conflict with that kind of mentality, yeah. ever. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, you have anything else to add to that? Well, yes. Um, I think the getting down to the root of it, and maybe you, know, you were talking about on the political level, the issues level. How about the husband and wife level? How about the friend to friend level? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, fellow church member and so forth level. Um, talk about myself. You know what? It's pride. I hate pride, and this is the biggest enemy, you know, and we're all working on pride. Well, there's a reason why it's number one on that certain list, you know. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, pride, okay. Well, yeah. Pastor, what do you say? Uh, a couple things. First of all, we shouldn't be surprised. Matthew 24, where Jesus right. is talking about the end, it said that many shall be offended. Mm. And that's what's happening. And so as soon <laughs> as we're offended... Well, where yeah. was that again? Uh, Matthew 24. Right. Okay. Right. And, and he's saying, talking about describing yes. the end times, yes. many shall be offended. Shall be offended. But here's the other thing that comes to my mind as I hear the other pastor share, is what James gave us as advice was to be quick to listen and slow, slow to, to speak. speak. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, we, we, we still have to answer that way. We still have to conduct ourselves in that manner. But what we have to do or what we are tempted to do is hurry up and give my side of the story and then tell the full side of it. Here's everything that goes along with that and here's why I'm right. Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of being slow to speak and quick to answer, if we just did it that way mm -hmm. and got the cart behind the horse, yeah. then I think that uh, the issues that are real could actually be put on the table True. and discussed, and then we could get to the root of them. Well, it's the difference in conflict resolution. I think a lot of people would rather do a sermon than have a conversation. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you, you, no sermon has ever resolved a conflict ever in the history of clear back to when Jesus was doing it. Yeah. No, no sermon has ever resolved conflict. Only conversation does, but you can't have conversation when one person's preaching. Uh, and I, I, think, I think that's the problem is, we, like you said, you know, we want to browbeat the other person and say, well, here's the top 400 reasons why you're wrong <laughs> and you can't ever resolve a conflict that way. We have conflict at the local level, mm -hmm. there's conflict at the state level, mm -hmm. and there's conflict at the well, federal level. There's even conflict at the personal level. Yeah, you know, personal I mean, level. I mean, even around this table, Inter I bet we can find a variety of situations <laughs> yeah. that, we, that the four of, or five of us don't even agree on. And, and, right. and at the time of this taping, we've got conflict uh, over in Europe mm -hmm. with uh, the threat of um, uh, of Russia now. Yeah, there's there's See, there's, con there's conflict on what we want to do about it, and nobody agrees, and it's just it's it's very bizarre. Well, in this country, if I came back to this country, do you think that the conflict that is over whatever? I mean, there's so much, long list. And mm -hmm. I'm sure your minds are going down your list. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a separate list. Is this country going to implode if we don't resolve conflict? And I don't ask you to predict the doom and gloom. I don't mean it in that sense, but you know, of course, when you get two people together, you can expect there's going to be conflict. Mm -hmm. I understand right. that. I'm a realist in that regard. But it has just seemed to reach such penetrating levels in these last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and we I Christians say, have got to be at the forefront of getting it resolved. I say no. I say no, it won't implode. The reason I say no is because uh, conflict, when, when that's all it becomes about, eventually the sleeping giant's going to wake up and say, this is all dumb. And, w and we're gonna we're gonna do what's right. Uh, that's what conflict does is it rouses the sleeping giant. And once that sleeping giant is back in the in the picture, the rest of the conflict goes away. When all the people in the uh, say our country come together and say there's a lot of really wrong stuff out there that we're not gonna have anymore, it won't be had anymore. We'll we'll vote people out who try to push it. We won't buy products that are trying to push it. And eventually we're going to get to that point once the, once the giant wakes up. So are we going yeah. to implode? No. Is it going to get ugly before it gets resolved? Obviously, yes. But I think that's what we're heading toward. Yeah, and well, trying not to be you know, prisoners of the moment or prisoners of our time. Exactly. I, I've, I've, had, I've had a difficult time looking at the, the strife at which we have in our country now and, and saying, and I've heard people say, this is the most divided we've ever been. I don't know if this is the most divided yeah. we've ever been. We've fought a war between each other. Um, so not that long ago. I know 150 years ago seems like a long time, but that's 
That's three really old men ago. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't been that long <laughs> since we've had that. Did you say 50? Is that what it just said? Three. It's 100, 150. I know, but three, that was three 50-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. So middle-aged men. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three young and spry. He cleaned uh, up his act. He men. cleaned up his act. Yeah. yeah, there we go. So, yeah. but we, we've, we've been divided. And there have been times where there have been a lot of, a lot of a strife in our country. There have been a lot of arguments. Uh, you know, I remember, I remember the L.A. riots back in the early 90s and everything that kind of went up. I, I was a Chicago, I am a Chicago Bulls fan. They burned down Chicago three times over, over championships. So there's, there's been a lot that has gone on. I don't think that we're worse than we've ever been. I think it's more available to see than it's yeah, ever been. Media, absolutely. Yeah, the media, you, you've got social media. Everyone mm -hmm. can just post whatever comes in their yep. cotton pick in mind at any point in time. Yeah. Most of it's not helpful. And we'd, I, be, we'd be happy to tear on that too. Go ahead. I, 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 heard something, I heard something the other day, 40% of the internet, internet traffic or Twitter traffic was bots. So 40% of the stuff is not even human beings right. that are on there, but they're, say what you want about artificial intelligence, but it's reading what other human beings are doing and go, well, you people must be like that. And they're just copying whatever it is that we're doing. So I think it's out there more than it used to be. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we're more divided than we've ever been. And I think that it will come to a point mm -hmm. where the, if you want to say silent majority, if you want to say sleeping giant, however you want to, where everyone will kind of do a self-correction and go, okay, we've had about enough of this. Yeah. And then whatever it looks like from there is, is what it looks like. Yeah. You gentlemen want to get in on this or are you going to let them steal the show? <laughs> no, no I, I would just like to comment that I think this, Jesus said a house divided against itself can will not stand. Yeah. And I think it's up to us. And so what Pastor Tim shared is we have to make that decision, though. It's up to us. I Honestly, agree. as a co when, when are we going to say enough's enough? And when are we going to err on? It's really not air, but when are we going to say it's about peace? It's about unity. It's about that. When are we going to make a stand for that? Right. Because then I don't think we will implode. Right. But it's up to us mm -hmm. if we hang on with dear life and white knuckle. Mm -hmm you know, our, our opinions, then I think we could, but I think it's really up to us. And I pray, my prayer is that the church is the one that rises up and makes the stand and said, we will be pe people of peace. Okay. Pastor Wyckoff, I'm going to come back to you in a moment. We need to take a break right here. Hold your thoughts and you know, get your gun cocked because we want you to come back. <laughs> we'll be right back in a few minutes. Stay with us. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back, and thank you for staying with us. Pastor Wyckoff, you didn't get a chance to get, to get in on all yes, that. Yes. Uh, we're talking about, obviously, conflict. Uh, it, it, it's, it's all over the place in, in every yes. nook and cranny. Yes. What, what, can, what can we do as Christians, and how would you say we need to develop some sort of a mechanism to resolve yeah. conflict? Yeah. Well, I would pick up on what Mark was saying. It's got to start in the church, you know, among Christians. Sure. right. And uh, I think a lot of us, uh, Jesus was talking about lust of other things, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches. And, and I think a lot of us are immersed in the news. We're immersed in social media. And it kind of gets back to the roots of depression. You know, what you focus on is going to be what you think about. And your thinking is going to be in line with that. And, um, you know, conflict, hate, you know, I disagree. And we could be right on an issue and be wrong in our obsession with our correctness. No question. No yeah. question about that. Yeah. Could you expand on that a bit? More? Yes. Um, you know, we, I think really Jesus is looking for, we, we were talking about disciples during the break. And, that was uh, a good discussion itself. That, that was a good discussion. <laughs> and, you know, we have a lot of believers, but few disciples. You know, believers are going to heaven, but what Jesus is looking for is disciples. And a disciple was defined by Jesus as, you know, if you um, abide in my word, then you're truly my disciples. And I think if we're, 
it, it, we should engage in the debate. I think we should stand up for what is right. You know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but to be obsessed with that over our growth as a Christian, you know, a sign of maturity is to be more Christ-like, but you become more Christ-like through uh, meditation in the word. And so I think what happens is that the church needs to be discipled in that direction to prioritize really, you know, the growth and maturity. And as we do that, and as we, um, you know, reflect Christ more by prioritizing spiritual things in the word, that we, that our fruit will also show in less conflict. And there's enough Christians in the nation where I think, you know, that, that can uh, be a, a, a guiding force for the, for the rest of the society. And to go to your point too, as we look, if we look at the example that Jesus set, because his disciples, they had different political views. Right, they they were, you know, they wanted, okay, well, the Messiah is here. He's going to use military might to restore yeah. the yeah. kingdom to Israel, mm -hmm. restore Israel to herself. And yeah. there were all these different opinions, but that's not what Jesus' focus was on. That's not what he wanted his disciples to focus yeah. on. He wanted them to focus on bringing the kingdom of heaven forward. Yeah. So, again, as you said, we, we can have these discussions and we can as the church lead the way in showing people that you can still disagree and love each other, you can still have political viewpoints across the spectrum and still be brothers and sisters in Thank Christ, you. which I think is right. very important to mm -hmm. show, mm -hmm. right. but also the primary objective or the primary goal for the believer in Christ is to usher in the kingdom of God and looking into how do we do that. And winning the argument is not always ushering in the kingdom of God. Going back to your point, you, know, you can win the argument and lose the person. Yeah. And if we do that, then we have lost as a follower mm -hmm. of Christ. Yep. Yeah. So in context with that, is it more important to win the battle or to win the war? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what you have to ask yourself. I, I'm reminded of this Proverbs, uh, Proverb 15 verses one to three, a soft answer turns away wrath, yeah. but a harsh word stirs up anger. Mm -hmm. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. Mm -hmm. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the good and the evil. Yeah, yeah. So the Lord's paying attention. Yeah. And if we think about that in concepts of having to try to win that battle, right? Is it more important to win this battle and prove that you're right? Mm -hmm. Or is it more important for us to win the war? And, and regardless, you're still going to have people who say the moon is made of cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Say, okay, and, and then you move moving. on. Yeah, yeah it's like, okay, whatever you believe is, is, is what you right. believe. Okay. You know, as a mentor of mine once said, no one comes to Christ by losing the argument. So <laughs> we can't argue people yeah. into Jesus or into anything else, mm. most cases, because people will believe when they want to be convinced of something. Yeah. And going back to what you said earlier, that so we, we come into something we don't want to be convinced of, right. we want to be right. right. But that doesn't create any fertile ground for any opinion to be swayed or convinced either way. Right, and I actually think of one of the, the, the greatest examples of conflict mediation we have in the Bible is King Solomon when the two women brought the baby. Yes. Yeah. What did he say? Well, let's put some skin, in, literally put some skin in the game. And he, as soon as somebody has something to lose, that, that's, that's when, when the, everybody's like, well, let's just agree now because we want the baby to get split yeah. in half. Yeah. And I, I think that that's what it is, is a lot of people feel like they come into these conflicts with nothing to lose and everything to gain. And that's not necessarily true. Mm. You're actually destroying relationships and, and, and hurting things in the midst of that. And uh, uh, you're, you're losing things you didn't even realize you had. Or, 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 you're, or you're preventing yourself from having something you could have potentially had. You know, making a friend, which would be way better than a you know, score one on the argument thing. Yeah. That's good. You know, I, uh, we touched, uh, you remember during the break that, um, not the, well, between shows I should say, mm -hmm. We had a good discussion over there on the other side of the studio, and I'd like to bring the discussion of discipleship, the world calls it mentoring, uh, into the discussion. I'm wondering what we could do to minimize conflict in the future if we disciple people properly, mm -hmm. not just bringing them into the church and getting them uh, saved and converted and baptized and the like, mm -hmm. but mentoring them into a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. So that as we learn to behave like Christ behaved and love like Christ behaved, we could minimize that. Could you speak on the importance of what th the world relates to it as mentorship? We call it discipleship. Well, what does that mean? Yeah, what does it look like? People who are truly confident in their position don't get into petty conflicts. They simply don't need to. You know, if, I, if I'm sure about myself where I'm at, 
hey, you don't want to agree with me? That's fine. Yeah. I know where I'm at. Yeah. And, and, and you're not going to convince me. I'm not going to convince you. I can still be your friend. You may hate my guts, and that's fine. But, yeah. but, but I think people who, if you're talking about discipleship, yeah. if, people, if, if these are spiritual conflicts we're talking about, if we can help people be confident in their faith and confident in their relationship with Christ, okay, you want to believe the moon is made of cheese? Fine. I don't care. <laughs> or you want to believe, you know, whatever crazy thing you believe? Fine. I think it would be helpful if you would listen to me, but if you don't, it doesn't, it's not anything, no loss to me. And with that attitude, you, you, you're quite assured of yourself, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. I'm not, I think a lot of people who get in these, these knockdown, drag out conflicts are actually trying to convince themselves, yeah. not the other person. Yeah. You know, I think in the answer on the discipleship, there's, there's two elements I'm learning uh, about. And um, one of them is dis when you have a discipling relationship, either you're being discipled or uh, you're discipling someone else, it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, person, now you have access to their mind, but also to their heart, mm -hmm. number one. Um, and secondly, if, in the context of discipleship, if you look through the letters, you know, to the church, you know, writ written to Christians, um, uh, and that is you have discipleship paired up with maturity, development, becoming more like Christ in our character, and so forth. And that's, that's uh, I guess, growth and maturity is the theme of discipleship. And then why you have disciples is to bring them along and really reproduce yourself. That's really what you're doing Jim. in discipleship. And that's going to grow us into the image of Christ and conflicts mm -hmm. will still come up, yeah. you know. Sure. The flesh is still there. It's mm -hmm. not going to go away. But you know, again, what will take over, though, is the mind of Christ in this whole discipleship. And then without the discipleship, it's okay to go to church. And I love mm -hmm. people coming and listening to us. You know, mm -hmm. the sermon is good, but it gets down to the mentoring, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, living with that person or, you know, that you're discipling and bringing them along in their faith or being brought along in your faith. That's mm -hmm. the only way we're going to grow. Okay, very good. Let's turn to another subject, totally non-related. We got another letter from viewers. Uh, this one talking about the quality of movies these days. And as you know, as COVID is uh, backing away, more people are going to the movies. And this viewer is noticing that more and more movies coming out of Hollywood have a demonic base to it. And that they're not just the regular scary movies we used to be used to all the time. <laughs> but they really have a sense of demo demonic activity in them. Mm -hmm. Are you noticing this one and two? What's going on here? Well, what I'll are tell we you doing exactly what's it? going on. People have a spiritual hunger because mm -hmm. it's not being filled. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to fulfill it in, in, in some, of the, some of this uh, fiction, and that's what it is. Fiction that's going on is uh, try, trying to create these stories where there's a spiritual aspect to it because, again, that, that appetite or that, that hunger, I should say, is not being fed because people are not being discipled, <laughs> going back to our right. previous conversation, since that's not happening, I'm going to go find that spiritual component in my life someplace else. I'm going to watch a movie about a demon or a who knows what, running around, mm -hmm. doing whatever. And uh, that, that, that's going to try to fill that, that piece, but it's not fulfilling at all. It's entertaining, which is what it's supposed to be, or mm -hmm. supposedly entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's not fulfilling the need that I have. But people have that hunger, so there's that interest out there. So when I see a, a trailer on TV about this thing, about whatever, I'm drawn to it because I have that desire, but I, I'm, I'm basically you know, eating junk food when I should get something nutritious at, at, in a church. That's what we're looking at. I think, Bill, that it comes down to dark, darkness and light. I mm -hmm. think that's what it comes mm -hmm. down to. And if you really honestly ask yourself, is this thing uh, that I'm gonna watch or that I am watching, is it drawing me closer to Christ or is it actually pulling me away? And, and, and Paul addresses that in Ephesians chapter five, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Mm -hmm. So if you think about these things, and you know, the debate is, because I've got children, mm -hmm. and we've had these discussions, <laughs> and, and I've discussed this with many people over there. Oh, well, you know, you're just making a big spiritual deal out of it, right? It's really, it's just fake. It's not really real. But I want to ask this, where did the ideas come from? Yeah. The ideas came from somewhere. Yeah. Did it come from the light or did it come from the darkness? Yeah. And what it says is, it says, 
how we're supposed to receive the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them, Paul writes. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. And if you think about it, these scary movies are always like in secret. Mm -hmm. There's always a secret mm -hmm. uh, as an undertow. So again, I think it boils down to, is it about darkness or light? Is it drawing me closer to Christ? Or is it pulling me away from that to feed mm -hmm. that spiritual mm -hmm. desire? Absolutely. And to go along with that too, I, I think that's a that's an observation that you could make about any movie because I think there's a oh I think there's a spiritual component to virtually any movie because yeah. I think one of the reasons that you know we have movies that that do so very well like the the big money makers over the last few years have been you know a lot of the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm -hmm. films and the most recent Star Wars, I think, have, have, have done really well. Now, a lot of those have built-in audiences already, but there's also elements in those films that communicate something to the people who are watching them and who are listening to them. Some type of, some type of truth, something about mm -hmm. honor or sacrifice or things like that. Those are very spiritual matters. And with, with scary films, and for the record, I, I don't think they're scary. I think they're dumb. Yeah. I've never <laughs> I looked at that, oh, cut the string. That's, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I never really liked those, but there is, a, there is a spiritual element to that. And it's very simple to go, it is just a movie and you look at all the special effects and oh man, they, they used a lot of syrup on that scene and, <laughs> and, and everything else that kind of goes along with that. But you do have an avenue created where you can allow something spiritual that you don't want there to come in. And maybe it doesn't bother you that night. Maybe it doesn't bother you the next day or the next year, but at some point you've created this foothold for the devil to get in. And I, and I know I sound like, you know, an old timey pastor, but you create these footholds for something that is not of God to get in. And it's a Trojan horse. You don't know what you're inviting into your life. It could be nothing. It could be a silly movie. It could be life threatening. You just don't know. Here we'll put any, any other comments on that? Yeah, before? Jesus said the kingdom of God is sowing and reaping. So what you're describing is it's a seed being planted, mm -hmm. whether it's a seed of light or whether it's a seed of darkness. A seed could be planted uh, by us opening the door to that. So Absolutely. And it may, like you just said, it may not come to fruition right away. Mm -hmm. It could be a year or two or something like that, but that seed has been growing yeah. all along. And when it does come to fruition, watch out. It, it, mm -hmm. There, well, there are a lot of people, that, of course, in, in our society that don't believe that demons exist, that devils right. exist. They yeah. don't believe that there's inspiration that comes from the devil. And there, there's a job that we need to do as church to get that across to the world as a part of the overall move to convert people to Christianity. Well, we've exhausted our time for today. Listen, I thank you very much, gentlemen, for the, the quality of the content because I believe it's going to help somebody. We'd love to get your letters in as we've been getting, uh, not only about things that you have questions about, please continue to do that, but as well, uh, let us know how these gentlemen did. We'd like to hear your comments. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today's program. We'll be back again, of course, next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris with these fine pastors. God bless you. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.